So we'll say that the four houses of Israel have always existed. There's always been Kohanim and Levim and Israelites and the Yaels of the world, right? These righteous non-Jews, so to speak, the, the Ger, the Nilvagir, on to Israel, attached for the sake of helping the nation, the greater nation of Israel, remove idolatry from the world. Is that a safe assumption? And we're not talking holy house or non-holy house. We're not saying any of that. And just for the sake of clarification, uh, we do know that intermarriage will never happen again, right? It was There were special cases where it brought King David in the world in terms of Ruth and Boaz. Uh, it was brought down in Rabbi Nevinsaul's Safer. And there's a lot of things like Jacob married two sisters, which will never happen again, right? And once there was a King David, the backside got its, its bribe, so to speak, to let it happen. Like Lot and his daughters bringing King David in the world as well. And then... For the, for the rest of time, Jews will marry in the holy house. Non-Jews will marry in the non-holy house. Should a non-Jew wish to marry a Jew, they convert to the, for, to the, the, the holy house of Israel uh, for the right reasons, a proper conversion, and they marry a, an Israelite or a Levite, and they will not marry a Cohen. Am I crystal clear about that? There will never be a permission again to bring another King David in the world because we already got King David. Okay? Uh, the Ger Toshav thing with Ruth, uh, the, 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 the scriptural level of, of not doing it is a Jew cannot marry an idolater. And you have to be sure it's not an idolater. And the, the Midrash and the, and the Talmud state that Ruth was a special Ger because everyone knew she was not an idolater. So she was able to enter into the holy house uh, in a very special way. Um, just like there will not be anyone ever again like Moshe Rabbeinu. Now, I, I can say, you know, Rabbi David Katz knows a lot of Torah. Wow, Baruch Hashem. But I am not quite Moshe Rabbeinu, type one. And there will never be a Moshe Rabbeinu again. Well, Gerim out there, there will never be a Ruth again. So you can you can kiss that dream goodbye. Uh, Ruth was Ruth, and Ruth brought us King David. King David's the Messiah. Uh, we don't need a whole bunch of Messiahs running around. One Messiah is enough. And that's why it's called Mashiach Ben David. So God brought the special Garam in Jethro and Ruth a long, long time ago. Uh, if you want to be Jewish, then convert to Judaism. And there's a, a lot of nice rabbis out there that can help to, help you along that line. Uh, intermarriage, as we as we know it, between the the Jew and the, uh, and the non idolater, and it's in its scripturally permitted ways, uh, which even back then were probably rabbinically pro- prohibited, uh, certainly will never be revisited again. There's no need to, uh, and the, the Jewish people don't need to do it. They won't do it. Uh, we'll never have another episode of Lot and his daughters. Thank God. You understand what I'm saying? So the, the Ramban brings down that God hates what he used to love and loves what he used to hate. And God used to love building up the Israel nation. He used to love that. And now God is not interested in building the nation of Israel. It's already built. God only has one mission in mind, and that is bringing salvation to the nation of Israel. And that salvation to the nation of Israel comes by, obviously, the nation of Israel, but the help of the righteous Gerim. As it's brought down in Midrash, Kabbalah, Chassidus, the the Vuas, the prophecies, we know that the Ger have a big help. Marrying Jews is not a way to help the Jewish people. It's not a way to help the world. In fact, it's illegal. Right? So the the Gerim should marry Gerim, and the Jews should marry Jews. After the uh, time of Ezra, there was a lot of Jews doing intermarriage back then, and they tried to make it kosher. And it didn't work. It really didn't work. It almost destroyed the, the, the nation. So just because the, the Torah let certain things happen, just like Lot with his daughters was technically allowed by the Torah, that's not, that doesn't mean go and do it. Um, and, you know, the rabbinic tradition exists for a reason. We don't necessarily follow every single Torah law just because it's permissible. 
something that is that is theoretically permissible doesn't mean go ahead and do it. The Midrash says that in the end of days, the pig will become kosher. Does that mean that we should run out and eat pig just because it's kosher? No, there's never a reason to eat pig. If you, you know, if you take a cold piece of meat and a cold piece of cheese and you happen to eat them together because they fell on one another and you didn't know it, did you, were you guilty of eating a cheeseburger? No, because the, the scriptural is cooking a kid in his mother's milk. So does that mean that we can go out and open a cold plated McDonald's cheeseburger shop for Jews? No, doesn't mean that. Um, just because something is rabbinically prohibited doesn't mean, oh, good, let's go and do it. All right, it is um, allowed to use a Shabbos koi. Wait, how's it go? You're allowed to use a Shabbos koi because only the Ger Toshav was commanded on Shabbos, not the Nachri. So should I have a Nachri come over and just turn my lights on for me and cook for me? And Well, why not? It's allowed. The Torah allows it. I'll have my Shabbos koi do all kinds of stuff, turn the channels on the TV for me, uh, do all kinds of stuff. No, the rabbi said, even though the Torah has a loophole, we made a concept of the Shabbos Goy is illegal. Now, the rabbis made it legal in certain situations. But everyone knows you cannot do malacha with a Shabbos Goy. It, does, it is not possible for every reason in the world. You don't need to be a genius to understand that. Why the Torah technically allowed it? Because the Torah was saying that the Ger Toshav should rest. And we know that the oral Torah exists and rabbis exist, and therefore fences exist for good reasons. The, 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 the Ger Toshav and, and, and all what it represents in a time before Jubilee or after Jubilee, the rabbinic uh, ikaram attached to it are for very good reason. Uh, again, intermarriage shouldn't have to even be explained, but it, it never did any good, even when it brought us King David. And when I say intermarriage, we're talking about uh, a non-idolater. The, the, no one will ever say the Torah is adamantly clear. Uh, that and I the, the the forbidden quality is a Jew and an idolater, and the 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 reason why the rabbis are stringent is how do you know who's not an idolater? So it's not that you know I, t- I told this to the boys in the yeshiva yesterday. You want to hear this? We're you know, we're a little off topic, but we're introducing a lot of things here. We were doing the mission of Burra with the boys. This is this will be my muscle for the for the intermarriage, right? If a Jew and a non-Jew, a real non-Jew, who does a goy who does malach on Shabbos, they have a contract, they have a business. Um, why do I have to stipulate that I that I don't work or get paid on Shabbos, but you, uh, Bob, do? Because if I don't stipulate, then it'll be like I made you, Bob, work for me on Shabbos. Type one. So the kids asked me, how is that? How is Bob working for you on Shabbos just because you didn't stipulate? Because you got to assume that Bob is working for the Jew on Shabbos because he's not Korean and doesn't know any better. So until I stop it, you got to consider it not stopped. It's a constant thing Bob's doing. So Ruth is making a, a straight line for Boaz and the Holy House of Israel. Right? She will not be stopped. Type one. If anything's short of that, then it's not a kosher thing. I think we can all agree that Ruth was special, that she went, she knew exactly that she was bringing David in the world and that she belonged in the holy house with Boaz. Agreed? Just like Moses knew that God was talking to him with prophecy, Ruth had Ruach HaKodesh to know. She was bringing the Redeemer in the world, and she needed to be in the Holy House. If you don't know that you need to be in the Holy House, then can you just wander into the Holy House? No. But if you want to convert, that's not the same as Ruth either. You can convert all you want. Conversion is a different thing. That's saying I'm going to put myself in the Holy House uh, so that I can do X, Y, Z. But Ruth didn't didn't sit and, and do some kind of conversion. That's why she was a special kind of gear. She would just went there. She was she was never not there. A convert a convert realizes that they should be there. Ruth never realized that Ruth was always there. Not a sh- I should be there. It's an I am there. 
You understand Ruth's dilemma. I am there, so why am I not? Well, you know, why do I appear that I'm not there? And that was a special time in history, Ruth and 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 uh, and, and, and Jethro. So the rabbis understood that that kind of gear will never happen again. That that was for the coming out of Egypt and bringing us the the complete redemption. Thereby, conversion industry was established, and there will never be a, a test like Ruth, and that's why Samuel wrote the book of Ruth. So for the rest of time, unless you're a Jew, you marry in the non-holy house. If you're Jewish, you marry in the holy house. You don't go out of the holy house, and the non-Jew can enter the holy house should they have a kosher conversion. Because again. The fear is idolatry. No idolatry can enter the holy house. And you don't, you don't just say, well, I don't believe in idols, therefore I belong in the holy house. No. There can be no hint. It's almost like saying, uh, are you righteous versus do you even have a Yitzhahara? How many of you can say that you have no Yitzhahara? Right? None. How many of you can say that you had a Torah revelation from God on the same level of Moses? You know, absolutely, God just spoke to me. No, you can't. Moses was the only one in history that had that level. So we we, we know that we can believe the Torah without any doubt whatsoever, because we know that Moses got it from God. Does anyone doubt that? Does anyone doubt that? One or two. Now, if I told you that I was sure that I had a revelation from God, I'm sure Good old buddy David Katz. Hey, good old buddies. Would you guys believe me? It's your good buddy Dave Katz. Hey, come on, man. I'm the gear rabbi for you all. You know, come on. You know how it is. We have class, and I am sure God told me this. No. No. Moses is unique out of everybody in history. If Abraham came and told you that he had a revelation from God, would you believe him? No, no, you would not. Two, no, you would not. The Torah makes it very clear that only Moses had that level revelation of Torah. You understand the difference? Moses was Torah. Nobody else was Torah. Now, if I had a Svara and a Chachma and a good idea, yeah, you can you can believe me, right? But uh, once I say God told me, no, God didn't tell you. You can, you can say, I think it came from God. I'm pretty sure it came from God, blah, blah, blah. Moses, you don't even think twice it came from God. So when Ruth says, I'm a, I belong in the holy house, you don't doubt that. Nobody else would even dare to do it. No one else would dare to write the Torah and call it authoritative than Moses. That's why it'll never happen again. But do I understand why the Torah had to let it happen? There is such a thing as God talking to people. There is such a thing as super duper gear like Ruth. Otherwise, if it was forbidden, it would never happen. And that's how God brings the redemption. But once it happens, then it's unique. Once it's unique, it's not perpetuated. It's like a lion and a kitty cat. So if you want to enter the, the holy house, what do you do? You convert. If you don't want to convert, that's why God made gear. Type one.